Welcome to the ACMG Knowledge Nugget on newborn screening for phenylalanine hydroxylase, or PAH, deficiency. This activity is intended for educational purposes only. Neither I nor the Planning Committee have any disclosures. This session is approved for 0.25 CME. To obtain CMEs for this activity, you will need to pass the quiz with a score of at least 80% and complete the evaluation. This session is a companion to the PAH Deficiency Act Sheet, which is freely available at www.acmg.net slash ACT. Act sheets are intended to be immediate resources for providers who encounter positive newborn screening results. Please keep in mind that a newborn screening result is just the first step in the diagnostic process. Further testing and evaluations are needed to determine if the newborn has the disease, a true positive result, or is unaffected, a false positive result. The act sheets are intended to provide an overview of the diseases identified by newborn screening and clear next steps for the management of a positive newborn screening result. This session will cover background information on PAH deficiency, including clinical features and the underlying genetic cause, actions a primary care provider needs to take upon receiving a screen positive test result for PAH deficiency, clinical considerations, and supplemental resources. The classic form of PAH deficiency more commonly known as phenylketonuria, or PKU, is an amino acid disorder caused by pathogenic variants found in the PAH gene, which leads to decreased phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme activity. This reduced activity results in the inability of the body to convert the amino acid phenylalanine to tyrosine from dietary protein, resulting in toxic levels of phenylalanine in the body. Other forms of PAH deficiency may also be detected through newborn screening. These include mild hyperphenylalaninemia, biopterin cofactor defects, and DNA JC12 deficiency, which also causes hyperphenylalaninemia. In some cases, biological mothers affected with PKU have newborns who are obligate carriers and who may screen positive for PAH deficiency even if the newborn is unaffected. It is critical that women with PKU who are pregnant maintain good control of their phenylalanine levels in order to avoid congenital anomalies in their child. The presentation of PAH deficiency is clinically variable and ranges from the most severe form, known as classic PKU, to benign hyperphenylalaninemia. In classic PKU, symptoms usually begin around a few months of life. Early symptoms include seizures, behavioral problems or irritability, eczema, a musty body odor, and lighter hair and skin than other family members. Those with other forms of PAH deficiency can also have seizures, difficulty swallowing, behavioral problems, and developmental delay with onset for months to years. All forms of PAH deficiency are inherited in an autosomal recessive manner, meaning that only infants with a pathogenic variant in both genes will be affected. Parents with a child with PAH deficiency are carriers and are unaffected, but have a 25% recurrence with any future children they have together. All states in the United States provide newborn screening for PAH deficiency. A good resource for checking a state's newborn screening panel is the newbornscreening.hrsa.gov website. Screening for PAH deficiency is performed by examining levels of the amino acid phenylalanine, which is elevated in individuals with PAH deficiency. 
Programs may also look at levels of the amino acid tyrosine, which can be decreased in individuals with PAH deficiency. Now that you have an understanding of what PAH deficiency is, let's talk about what to do if you have a patient screen positive for PAH deficiency during newborn screening. You will need to take the following actions. First, contact the family and do the following. Inform them of the newborn screening result and that more testing is needed to determine if their child does or does not have the disease. Ascertain clinical status. No clinical signs of PAH deficiency are expected in the neonatal period. Provide the family with basic information about PAH deficiency. Second, take a family history. Because PAH deficiency is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner, it is common for there to be no known family history of PAH deficiency. Third, Arrange for a referral to a PAH deficiency specialist for genetic counseling, a comprehensive clinical evaluation, and discussion of a treatment plan, including management of breastfeeding and formula administration. The specialist is typically a pediatric geneticist. The clinical evaluations should include a comprehensive physical assessment by an experienced PAH deficiency specialist and a consultation with a dietitian. Fourth, working with the appropriate specialist, take steps to ensure biochemical and or molecular confirmation of the newborn screening result. Confirmatory testing includes plasma amino acid analysis, assessment of urine terrans, and PAH or other relevant gene sequencing. Fifth, report the final diagnostic outcome back to your state newborn screening program. PAH deficiency is primarily treated through the avoidance of foods containing phenylalanine throughout the lifetime, the administration of phenylalanine-free formulas, and medications that help the body process phenylalanine. As you continue to care for your patient with PAH deficiency, it is likely additional questions and concerns will come up. Here are some resources where you can obtain information on PAH deficiency, appropriate laboratories and tests, and genetic specialists. Before we end today's session, let's have a quick review. First, PAH deficiency is a serious condition, and identification of affected individuals is essential for administration of early treatment. Second, Newborn screening may identify numerous forms of PAH deficiency. Third, act sheets are freely available on the ACMG website to review in the event of a screen positive result. In addition to PAH deficiency, act sheets are available for many other conditions that can be identified through newborn screening.